Hi, I'm Claudia Bushman, and you're listening to Gospel Tangent. The best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. Dr. Claudia Bushman helped restart the Exponent 2 magazine. In the early days of the church, it was known as the Exponent magazine, and it was catered to women. So Dr. Claudia Bushman is going to tell us more about her involvement as editor of the original Exponent 2 magazine, and we'll learn more about how church leaders felt about her involvement with the Equal Rights Amendment. It's a great conversation. You won't want to miss it. Check it out. So, Claudia, I know you had a big role in the Exponent 2, especially back in those Boston years. Can you talk a little bit about that? You focus more on female history, is that right? Well, I do it every quick comes to hand. You know, I do other things, but I've done a lot of uh, women's things. And um, Exponent 2, yes, well, uh, that came out of a project that a number of um, housewives in Cambridge, we had all these high-powered husbands who were getting important degrees and were all stuck at home taking care of our little children and so on. We felt we were undervalued at church and at home and everywhere else. So we were talking about our lives. There was much discontent and unhappiness housework, et cetera, et cetera. So um, at some point I said, um, why don't we do projects instead of um, instead of just talking? I think it would be more productive, but I think we would be better about this. And so we started doing projects. First project, well, we did lots of small projects, but one time when Jean England was in town, uh, I said, um, I told him that we had a lot of really um, underappreciated uh, housewives, a lot of smart women that were not uh, doing anything significant. Wouldn't he like it if we put together a women's issue of dialogue? And without even a second thought, he said, it's a great idea, go ahead, do it. And so uh, we started working on that. And many of us were uh, experienced in this kind of thing. This is new for all of us, so it took us a long time. But we did finally put together the pink issue of dialogue, which, as I understand it, is the only issue that is um, traded as a rare book or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it, uh, we did that, and it was an absolutely group effort. We did it. It was wonderful. We did lots of other things we did. Um, Oh, I wouldn't go into all things. We'd have speakers. Uh, we would put on a class for um, our local um, institute program. We um, did, uh, we, oh, what else did we do? Did banquets and we did, we did all sorts of things had for food was involved. But um, one time I came home from a one of these events and I said, well, it was just wonderful. Everything went perfectly. We just um, have a wonderful touch. Everything we do turns to gold. Now, what should we do? I said to Richard. And he said, well, why don't you start a newspaper? And this was not a completely new idea because we were all aware of the women's exponent, which we had copied some ideas from. And uh, so uh, at the next big meeting, I said, Richard thinks you ought to take down. The newspaper. So some of the people who were loved to do projects by this time said, that's great, let's do it. And uh, we even had a person that was was uh, claimed to be the editor because she had worked on a newspaper for a few summers. <laughs> we thought that was pretty, that's big experience for us here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but she was president of our relief society and we had a, a young have a baby. He said, well, I'll just have to talk to the bishop, see if they'll reduce the reduce and such. But he wouldn't do it. Yeah. But he wouldn't let her out of it. And so when she came back to a meeting, he said, oh, I can't do it. Bishop won't let me out. So I just can't be the editor. So somebody turned to me and said, well, you'll just have to do it. And, and so I said, well, can I wait until I've done this and this and this? Because I was in graduate school and various things. But we said, no, we've got to start right now. And so we did. And we we started a newspaper. And just our little housewives group 
Um, we had a very small amount of money. Actually, Leonard Arrington had been encouraging us doing all kinds of things. And then he had even given us a little bit of money to do pay some of our library fees for doing one thing or another. And uh, so uh, we decided we would start this newspaper. And using this grant from the church, <laughs> we um, sent the first issue out free to everybody we knew. We knew it had to be cheap because we were all poor. And so we did it on newsprint. Uh, it was pretty good little paper. What year was this approximately? 71, yeah. So I'm 71, uh, okay. And uh, so um, we sent out stacks to everybody that we knew. It had to be cheap, as I said, because we were poor. So we printed on newsprint. We decided we'd sell for subscriptions for $5 a year. And um, we sent it out to your buddy, said, give this out to your friends free, and then ha tell them to subscribe. By the end of the year, we had 500 subscriptions. Yeah. We we're in business, and it was great. People loved it. We never thought we could do a thing like that, but of course, you start to do it, you can do it. It was before the good days of uh, what you could do on the computer these days. We pasted up the, or the person. It was typed by somebody who used her husband's office typewriter after hours. Every time she made a mistake, she'd start a new line over. So we had the whole thing in ribbons. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Pasted out. But it was wonderful. We had a great time. <laughs> yeah. People started taking this seriously. It was really nifty. So, <laughs> all in business more than 40 years later. How about that? Wow. So it's still going. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. Is there an Exponent 2 blog? Has it turned into a blog now? It's turned into a magazine, yeah. Magazine, okay. So Exponent 2, was there an original Exponent that you were kind of modeling this after back in the early days of the church? We, oh, yes, we got the name from it. It was the idea. And we also, actually, we were very interested in the women of the past. When we, we also published a book along the way called Mormon Sisters, uh, which our people had written one chapter or the titles, and uh, we couldn't get anybody to publish it. So we decided to start a publishing company, and, uh, which we did. And we named that Emmeline Press Limited for Emmeline Wills. So we were very much involved with the older women of the church. We really uh, admired them for doing all kinds of things. I have to ask you, so in 1971 is when you started this, and it seems like that's about the time when the Equal Rights Amendment was trying to be pushed through Congress and had a lot of support. It seems like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the LDS Church had a big role in defeating the Equal Rights Amendment. Did the Church give you any grief about having a women's newspaper? Careful. <laughs> the church did give us a little grief, but um, we, and we all supported the Equal Rights Amendment. We were in Boston, which was very much more liberal than Utah, and uh, it was, um, it was an issue, and there were people that got a little distressed about it, and it did lead to some certain things. Um, one of the problems was that um, it really was a serious problem for us because Richard will stay president. And uh, there were various people in high places who felt it was not suitable that it uh, might seem as if the state was supporting this kind of an operation, which, of course, would be unseemly at that time particularly. So it did lead to a little difficulty. <laughs> but um, I would say, uh, and I'll just say that it, it really did uh, go to my, I did with some competitor, which I had been really cut on my convictions. But I would also say it was quite interesting. We had two apostles that came back to talk to us about it. 
Oh really? Can you share some more details on that? That sounds good and juicy. No, I don't think I better tell it. <laughs> well, oh, we're all friends. <laughs> you had a good advocate in your stake president, I'm sure. And, but uh, I'm, I'm sure I wouldn't have been able to do a, a lot of the things that I did if I hadn't been married to stink president because he had a lot of the best ideas going and starts healing with so if we I can go here basically. <laughs> well, I wish Richard Bushman was in my stake. I'll say that. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Drs. Richard and Claudia Bushman. In our next conversation, Richard is going to tell us more about the 1970s project on church history that was scuttled by the church. We dreamed up the idea of having a new comprehensive history of the church, which had been published in its finished form in 1930. 1980 was approaching, so that would be the 150th anniversary. So it seemed uh, likely that a new comprehensive history would be uh, suitable, especially because there are so many young historians coming along, a lot of new information. So Leonard asked me to do the first volume, which was um, the history of Joseph Smith's life up to 1830. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe to patreon.com slash gospel tangents for just $5 a month. Patreon is spelled p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash gospel tangents. If you'd like to watch the entire video, you can subscribe at YouTube, Patreon, or on my website at gospeltangents.com and click the yellow subscribe button for just $8 a month. PDF transcripts are just $10 a month, and you can get those on patreon.com slash gospeltangents or on my website. I'll send those to you as soon as I've finished completing it. If you'd like to get a paperback and PDF, just subscribe for $20 a month at either Patreon or on my website. Individual paperbacks are available at amazon.com. Just do a search for Gospel Tangents interview, and you can find all of our past interviews there. Share your Gospel Tangents pride by purchasing a t-shirt on our website at gospeltangents.com slash shop. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. You can get our latest updates by friending me at Facebook, or you can also follow our page at facebook.com slash gospeltangents. Become an insider and you can see the newest videos. Follow us on Twitter at gospeltangents. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got some of our great videos. Thanks again.